I'm gonna kind of cover these two though for you so you guys can understand this better. Um, so the first thing I told you guys to do is you guys can graph this. Or at least to get a good definite understanding. Or at least to get an understanding of what's going on. So I saw many students went ahead and plugged this into the graphing calculator and graphed this, and they got something that looked like this. Right? And then all we really need to do is remember our restrictions. x is less than negative 1 is for the quadratic. So let's just say negative 1 is right here. Um, and then x is greater than or equal to negative 1 would have been down there. So ideally, your graph should have looked something like this. Now, you don't even need to know what the graph looks like. But I'm just going to use the graph to explain the algebraic portion of what I am doing and why I'm doing it. All right? But you didn't need to know how to do this. Some students graphed it, though, and they like, understood this. You just got to remember, you got to make sure you can apply the restrictions, you know, or at least understand the restrictions. So the first one is saying, what is the x value approaching from the left? When we're approaching negative 1 here, what is the y value that we're approaching from the left? So you look at the graph, you say, from your left hand, we say, well, what is this y coordinate? Right? We've got to figure out what that y value is. Now, some of you found it on your calculator. You just said, you know, what is negative 1? But does it matter if it's open or closed? No, we just want to know what is this value it's approaching. So the way to do that, guys, is can't we, isn't the same thing as negative 1 to the left is really just plugging in um, a negative 1 into the top equation? Because when I plug in negative 1 to this top equation, what do I obtain? What do I get? 5. Because that is the y value that we are approaching. We're approaching 5. Does it ever equal 5? No, because that's a hole there. right? So another way to think about this is look at these restrictions. It says this graph for all values that are left of negative 1. So wouldn't you guys agree this is like my left function? And then for all values greater than negative 1, this is kind of like my right function. So if I want to evaluate the right-hand limit, I should plug in a negative 1 into my left or my right function? The right function, right? I want to look at what's happening to the right. Now, if you already have the graph, you should already know the answer is 0. But let's just plug it in to make sure that's correct. So I say the limit as x approaches negative infinity from the right would be a negative x minus 1. So I plug in negative 1, use my parentheses, and I get 0. So I ask you for the left-hand limit, the right-hand limit. And then I say, well, what is the general limit? Well, since the left and the right-hand limit don't approach the same number, the general limit does not exist. Okay. So for your problem, you guys have a very similar problem. Um, the only difference with your problem is you guys have an absolute value and an exponential. And some 